Hello friends! Welcome back to Atika's Adventures. Today I am taking you to the land of volcanoes. The land of lush green rainforests. The land of magnificent mountains and volcanic lakes. And beautiful Spanish colonial architecture. We are going to Guatemala. This beautiful and culturally rich country is just a short three hour flight from Houston, Texas. Our friendly guide Rodrigo from Nahual Tours picked us up from the airport in Guatemala City and took us to Antigua where we were gonna spend one night and one whole day. We stayed at Casa Madeleine, which was a very cozy and welcoming little bed and breakfast hotel. After dropping all of our stuff at the hotel, we took the free shuttle up to Cerro de Santa Ines. One of the main reasons we wanted to come up here was because we wanted to have dinner at El Tenador so we could overlook the volcanic mountains and watch the sunset while enjoying this delicious meal. One of the highlights from that evening was when our server asked us which country we are from. When we told him that we came from the USA, but we are originally from Pakistan, he brought us American and Pakistani flags. The next morning, we woke up to the sound of birds chirping, the cool, crisp morning breeze, and the sun rising over the mountains. We were ready to start exploring Antigua. But first, it was time for breakfast. The staff at the hotel had prepared a special Guatemalan breakfast for us. After this filling breakfast, we left to explore the city. We took a rickshaw, or a tuk-tuk as they call it in Guatemala, up to Cerro de la Cruz. From here, you get panoramic views of beautiful Antigua City, nestled in between the volcanic mountains. Our next stop was the historical 17th century church of La Merced. The biggest highlight of not just that day, but of the entire trip, was the live volcanic eruption we witnessed. Music 
Next stop, the Santa Catalina Arch, which is one of the most distinguishable landmarks in Antigua. Built in the 17th century, it originally connected the Santa Catalina convent to a school, allowing the nuns to pass from one building to the other without having to go on the street. Next stop, Chocolate Museum. Hi, we're gonna take you to the Chocolate Museum. Follow me. <laughs> Chocolate played a very important role in Mayan culture and history. The Chocolate Museum is a great place to learn some fun facts and take chocolate making classes. We were hungry after all the exploring, so we made a stop at Takul Restaurant. This is very famous for amazing tacos. The strawberry lemonade was incredibly refreshing. After lunch, we strolled around in Central Park. The park is surrounded by arch-adorned colonial buildings. The stunning Cathedral de Santiago that was originally built in the 1500s but destroyed by earthquakes and rebuilt in the 17th century. You will find handicraft vendors all around the park. In the center of the park is the Fountain of Sirens that was also built in the 17th century. After spending the majority of the day in Antigua, it was time to leave for Lake Atitlan. Our tour guide Rodrigo came to pick us up and drive us up to the hotel in Panja Chao. This was just over 50 miles, but the road trip takes almost two and a half to three hours. We made a stop at Tecpan to stretch our legs. When we arrived at Lake Atitlan, we were in awe. It was such an unbelievable sight. This massive volcanic lake surrounded by mountains, it was just breathtaking. By the time we reached the hotel, it was already dark and we were exhausted and sleepy. The next morning, we woke up to this incredible view and the crisp morning breeze from our balcony. We went for a little stroll to explore the beautiful hotel situated right on the lake. After this, we were hungry, so we headed over for breakfast. The hotel's restaurant offers a great ambiance and the presentation of the food is excellent. However, the taste and quality was average. After breakfast, we wanted to go around the lake and explore the surrounding Mayan villages. The hotel offers helicopter rides and boat tours for this. We 
arrived by boat at the historic Mayan village of Santiago, where tradition is still alive and you feel like you've stepped back in time. It is such a fascinating place. We took a tuk-tuk ride to tour the village and stopped in some of the markets to see the daily hustle and bustle. Upon returning to the hotel, it was time to leave back for Antigua for our last night. It took us more than four hours to get back because traffic was horrible. We made it to Hotel Casa Santo Domingo at night. We were hungry and tired. The restaurant at the hotel called El Refactorio was outstanding. The ambiance, the food, the presentation, everything was absolutely high class and scrumptious. exhausted and it was time to sleep. We woke up to the cool morning air and this garden view from our balcony. After walking around this historical hotel that was originally a church and monastery that dates back to the 1500s, we were ready for breakfast. We headed back to El Refectorio restaurant and as expected, everything was perfect. We had to get back to the airport in Guatemala City to catch our afternoon flight, but we still had a few hours to kill. So we took the free shuttle back up to Cerro de Santa Inés. We roamed around on the beautiful hills. We checked out the lovely art sculptures. We had a relaxing and enjoyable time. The rich history, the colorful culture, and the beautiful lush greenery of this gorgeous country 
will always stay in our hearts. We will definitely come back to Guatemala someday. Thank you so much for joining us on our three-day trip to Guatemala. Join us again on more adventures and don't forget to leave me your feedback in the comment section below. Bye for now.